In the remaining sections of this uh, chapter, starting with this section, we're going to talk about stoichiometry. And stoichiometry, as mentioned at the beginning of this chapter, is what allows us to predict how much starting materials we need to make a certain amount of product or how much product we can make from a certain amount of starting materials. So basically what we're going to do is um, look at some of the introductory things of stoichiometry. Now to do the overall process of what people typically think of as stoichiometry, we need to review converting grams to moles and moles to grams, which you've already done. But they're a very important part of stoichiometry, especially when we're not dealing with solutions. A little bit later on, we're going to look at some examples where we're interacting with solutions, and there we're going to look at converting molarities and volumes to moles. So here we have a couple of examples of just converting grams to moles, which is completely a review. So if we have 15.6 grams of water, and we want to find out how many moles of water it is, we need to know the equality or the molar mass. So we have two hydrogens, which is 2 times 1.01 plus 16.00. So using the periodic table, we know that one mole of water is equal to 18.00, uh, excuse me, 18.02 grams of water. So that's the 2 times 1.01 plus the 16.00 from the periodic table. We add them all together and we find the molar mass. Starting with 15.6 grams of water times, well, we want grams on the bottom, so we put the 18.02 grams of water, the molar mass, and the one mole of water on the top. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, and you'll find that the, to 3 6 bigs, there's 0 0.866 moles of water in this example. So we need to be able to convert from grams to moles. We also need to be able to convert from moles to grams. So if we have 2.20 moles of, for example, methane, and we want to know how many grams of methane that is. Well, methane is C, 12.01, H4, 4 times 1.01, .01, or one mole of methane equals 16.05 grams of methane. So that's the molar mass. So starting with 2.20 moles of methane times, in this case we want the one mole of methane on the bottom, and we want the 16.05 grams of methane on the top. And when you do that math, you find that there's 35.1 to 3 sig figs grams of methane in the 2.2 moles. Notice that converting from grams to moles and moles to grams requires an equality which relates the molar mass, the total molar mass when you add them up, to one mole. Note that the one is always one. It's always one mole based on the molar mass. Now we need to look at stoichiometry. And stoichiometry involves adding a step, which is converting from moles of one compound to moles of another. Now, often you're going to need to convert from grams to moles and moles to grams to do it, but really the stoichiometry part is only the part in the middle where you're relating moles of one compound to moles of another using a balanced chemical equation. So let's look at that first, and then once we have that, let's put it all together and do all of the stoichiometry um, for solids. Uh, we'll do a couple of examples. So let's start with a chemical equation. If we have hydrogen plus oxygen yields the stable product water. Now you know that the first thing you want to do whenever you're doing um, a balanced chemical equation, or excuse me, whenever you're looking at a chemical equation is balance it. Well, if we have water here and we have two oxygens, the minimum number of waters we can make is two. And if we make two waters, we need four hydrogens or two H2s. Now we have a balanced chemical equation. Now let's look at this as equalities. What is this saying? Well, this is saying that if I react two hydrogens, I'll make two waters. Or that if I react two hydrogens, I'll need it to react with one oxygen. Remember that in chemistry, the number of convenience is the mole. So we don't often think about it in terms of atoms or molecules. We think about it in terms of moles. And this balanced chemical equation can give us several equalities. In fact, it can tell us that two moles of hydrogen equals two moles of water. For every two of these we react, we get two of these. It could tell us that one mole 
of oxygen equals two moles of water. For every one oxygen we react, we make two waters. That's what the balanced chemical equation says. Or it could even tell us that if we have two moles of hydrogen, we're going to need one mole of oxygen to react with it. So these three equalities can all be found from this balanced chemical equation based on the stoichiometric coefficients. Notice that the moles of hydrogen or the moles of water that we can need or get is based on the stoichiometric coefficients, the numbers in front of each of them. If there's no number again, it's one. Well, how can we use these to our advantage? Well, let's say that we had 15 moles of oxygen and plenty of hydrogen and we want to know how many moles of water we can make. So we don't just have one, we have 15. Well, we can use these as conversion factors in dimensional analysis. Starting with 15 moles of oxygen times. Well, first of all, let's pick which one we want to use. Well, we want to use the relationship between oxygen and water. So if we look, this relates oxygen and water. Since we have oxygen on the bottom, we want to use the one mole of oxygen on the bottom. And now we're trying to find water, so we want to use two moles of water on the top. Notice that that is exactly this equality. One mole of oxygen, two moles of water. And we find that we can make 30 moles of water from our 15 moles of oxygen. Let's do another example. Let's say we have um, 45 moles of hydrogen and plenty of oxygen, and we want to know how many moles of water we can make. Well, starting with 45 moles of hydrogen times. How many moles of hydrogen do we have? Two moles of hydrogen, which goes on the bottom. And how many moles of water will we form? Two moles of water, which goes on the top, multiply by two, divide by two, and you get the same number, 45 moles of hydrogen. Whoops, 45 moles of water. So we could also use this top equality. So we can just use the balanced chemical equation to convert from moles of one thing to moles of another. Now we have two things we can do. We can convert from grams to moles and moles to grams those being one of the two things. And the other thing is, using a balanced chemical equation, we can convert from moles of one thing to moles of another. We now need to combine these two ideas to figure out if we start with a certain number of grams of hydrogen, which we could weigh, it's a gas, but we could still weigh it on a balance, if it was in a balloon or something, all right, to how many moles of water, or how many grams of water, even better, that we could make, which we could weigh at the end. So let's look at an example of this type of situation. So let's say we have 15.0 grams of hydrogen and we want to, and we have plenty of oxygen present and we want to know how many grams of water we can make. And we already had the balanced chemical equation in the previous um, part. So it's hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas yield water, probably as a gas, and we needed a two here and a two here to balance it. So now we have 15 grams of hydrogen and we want to know how many grams of water we can make and assuming that there's excess oxygen. In the next section we'll talk about what happens if there is an excess oxygen, if there's an amount of oxygen given. Well here we need a plan of attack. We can convert using the balanced chem chemical equation from moles of one thing to moles of another but we can't convert from grams of one thing to grams of another. So we first need to take those grams of hydrogen and convert them to moles of hydrogen. Then once we have moles of hydrogen, we can use the balanced chemical equation to figure out moles of water. And then finally, we can use a periodic table to find grams of water. So we're gonna go from grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen, from moles of hydrogen to moles of water, from moles of water, to grams of water. You've done with the previous um, the previous examples all of these steps. We just now need to combine them all together. Well the relationship between grams of hydrogen and moles of hydrogen is one mole of H2 equals, use the molar mass of hydrogen, 
2 times 1.01, .01, which is 2.02 .02 grams of H2. Notice it's always one mole. From the periodic table, it's, this is the molar mass, the mass of one mole. The only reason we double it is because it's H2. Now we need to go from moles of hydrogen to moles of water. There we use the balanced chemical equation. Two moles of hydrogen equals two moles of water. Then finally, we need to go from moles of water to grams of water. We use the periodic table again. Two times 1.01 .01 plus 16.00. So one mole of water equals 18.02 grams of water. So these are all of our equalities. Now starting with 15.0 grams of hydrogen times. We want grams to cancel out. So we put the 2.02 .02 grams of hydrogen on the bottom and the one mole of hydrogen on the top. Now we want moles of hydrogen to cancel out. So using this equality or the balanced chemical equation, we put two moles of hydrogen on the bottom and two moles of water on the top. Now we want to convert from moles of water to grams of water. So we want moles of water to cancel out. So we put the one mole of water on the bottom and the 16 plus the 2.02, .02, two hydrogens, or 18.02 grams of water on the top. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, and the calculator will tell us 133.812 grams. However, we need to round to three significant figures. Uh, this is three, this is three. Note that these do not have sig figs. This ones are exact, these twos are exact. So to three sig figs, 134 grams of water. This is extremely useful. If we react 15 grams of hydrogen, we make 134 grams of water. This allows us to predict how much water we will make. Well, where did all that extra mass come from? How can you convert from 15 grams to 134 grams? All of that excess mass came from oxygen because this involves adding two hydrogens and an oxygen, and oxygen is much more massive than hydrogen. Let's look at another example of a similar concept. Let's say we react Na solid plus Cl2 gas. And we want to know if we react 42 grams of Cl2 equals how many grams of the product of salt. Well, before we do that, let's figure out what the product is. Since this is an ionic compound, we have Na plus and Cl minus, cross them, and we end up with NaCl solid. So what we want to figure out is how many grams of NaCl we will make. But of course, like any other chemical equation, we need to make sure it's balanced. If we have two Cl's here, the minimum number of NaCl's we can make is two. And if we make two NaCl's, we need two Na's. So if we take 42 grams of chlorine, it asks us how many grams of NaCl can we make? That's useful. And it assumes that we have excess sodium around. So let's look at our plan of attack. We can't convert from grams of one thing to grams of another, but we can convert from moles of one thing to moles of another. So starting with grams of Cl2, we want to convert that to moles of Cl2. And I strongly recommend you use these plans of attack. After we convert to moles of Cl2, we want to convert it to moles of NaCl. And then finally to grams of NaCl. Cl. So now we need our equalities. Well, grams of Cl2 to moles of Cl2 involves using the molar mass. And we want to double this because there's two of them. So one mole of Cl2 is 35.45 times 2, which is 70.90 grams of Cl2. Now we want to go from moles of Cl2 to moles of NaCl. Here we use the balanced chemical equation. One mole of Cl2 equals 
two moles of NaCl if I write out all the equalities. Now I want to go from moles of NaCl to grams of NaCl. Well, to find the molar mass of NaCl, we take the 22.99 and we add it to the 35.45, and we find that one mole of NaCl equals 58.44 grams of NaCl. So now we have the equalities we need to convert from grams to moles, from moles to moles, and moles to grams. Now we just need to set up our dimensional analysis. In order to do this, we start with our 42.0 grams of chlorine times. We want to put the molar mass on the bottom, 70.90 grams of Cl2 on the bottom, one mole of Cl2 on the top. Once we've found moles of Cl2, we want to convert it to moles of NaCl. In order to do that, we need to use the balanced chemical equation. We need to put one mole of Cl2 on the bottom, one from the balanced chemical equation, which we have in the equality, and two moles of NaCl on top. Finally, we need to convert it back to grams of NaCl. So we put one mole of NaCl on the bottom to get rid of the moles, and we put the 58.44 grams of NaCl on the top. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, and round to three for sig figs. In this case, you get 70.0 grams of NaCl. This, again, allows us to figure out if we react 42 grams of Cl2 with excess um, with excess sodium, how much sodium chloride we'll make. In this case, we'll make 70 grams of sodium chloride once we round it to um, three sig figs. In future lectures, uh, we'll look at uh, what happens if we know the amount of both starting materials that we have, and we'll also look at some uh, stoichiometry problems involving um, solutions, where you don't have solids, liquids, and gases, and use molar masses, but you actually have solutions and concentrations and volumes, and you find moles that way.